pretty sort of parallel, this, this little bit right here. And we've got our little back of the pelvis area right there. We can just join that up down to here. And then the leg starts to get seriously thin at the bottom. And then again, just like the front legs, we'll put in that fetlock joint above the hoof and the hoof itself. Okay, let's draw the other leg. Let's put in his hair. Now this is the fun part because you can just sort of do whatever you want with his hair and just imagine it going in like really interesting directions. And the secret is really not to make it all the same, to do big bits and little bits. His main stops right at the point of his withers. If we see it back there, we see like a little uneven line of hair at the top. And then we have to put in his forelock. So that's his hair, and then his tail. We know where his tail comes out because we've got this spine running through, so it comes out right there. And the bone inside his tail, when he's happy, he tends to carry it up high like this. So remember there's bone in there until, until here, and then you can start to curve it and hang the, uh, the tail down like a flag. The trick to this is just trying not to get in the way <laughs> of the legs. There we have it. Alright, the next step is to add some details, his eyes and his hair, and I've got my nice black pencil for that, and my eraser so I can get rid of some of this skeleton. Now I'm going to put some details in on his face. So this is my black pencil and I'm going to draw in his muzzle and the line where his muzzle joins the rest of his face, and a nice smile, and his nostrils which are sort of triangle shaped in there. His eyes, soulful eyes, which have sort of a thick eyelash over the top. His eyebrows, which real horses don't have, but spirit does. And that's really just so we can uh, do all the acting in the film. So this is the part that requires the most attention to detail. He's drawing the eyes, because that's the part that most people look at first. Okay, so I think that's his face pretty good. Put a few more nice crisp outlines on him. I think we're almost ready to color him in. Right, step number four, color. I've got some nice spirit-like colors here. So sort of a very dark chocolatey brown for his uh, mane and tail and his uh, stockings. And um, a couple of sort of brownish colors and a yellowy color for his body. So uh, let's get at it. Remember, when you're coloring him in, not to get too mechanical with the coloring. So when I'm coloring the hairs on his tail, I'm trying to do it in the direction of his tail, like this. You can put a little shine on his tail, too, just by leaving out a bit of color. Give it that nice shiny look. Let's do his mane in the same way. I'm not going to go crazy with the shadows, but I am going to give it a bit of a, a feeling that he's sort of a bit lighter on the top than he is on the bottom. So when I'm doing his belly, I'm again thinking of that round shape and letting my pencil flow with that round shape. Get a little darker under there. 
and a little lighter on the top of his nose and his forehead a little lighter as if the sun is hitting it. And then let's do his stockings, which are pretty much the same color as his mane and tail. And his muzzle too. Make that just a little lighter than his mane so you can see it properly. His nostrils. And then his hooves, which I'm just going to use the black and press very lightly so you get that gray color. I'm going to take another color, a lighter yellowy color, and go over the top because sometimes I think it's nice to mix colors up. We're just about done. All right. Well, I think that turned out pretty good. Don't worry if yours doesn't turn out quite like that just yet. It took me a lot of years to get this far. The only thing left to do is to sign it. <laughs>